We're going to talk next about motion of, of objects in more than one dimension. Up till now, the kinematic relationships that we've developed for position and velocity and acceleration all have been quantities that we've graphed on a number line, but in more than one dimension we have to consider these as vectors. This means that each of them will have a magnitude as well as a direction. It's helpful to visualize what we mean by a position vector. In a three-dimensional coordinate system, having an x-hat and a y-hat and a z-hat direction, in other words, x-hat represents the unit vector in the x along the x-axis, y-hat, the unit vector along the y-axis, and z-hat for the z-axis. A position r is some quantity x times x-hat plus y times y-hat plus z times z-hat. And up until now, uh, these quantities could depend on time. So here might be our vector r, but as just as we've been developing kinematic relationships between position, velocity, and acceleration for some quantity x as a function of time, it's possible that y and z all depend on time as well. In this case, if each of these functions is separately varying, and we go back to some of our experience with one-dimensional motion, then if this represents r at some time t1, if all these functions are separately changing, then the tip of the vector may move over here at some time t2. and may move over here at some time t3 and maybe over here at some time t4 and we could imagine drawing in this three-dimensional space a trajectory for what this position vector is doing. Over time, the tip of this vector would be sweeping out some complex shape where each of these components is given by these separate functions x of t, y of t, and z of t. This is what we mean by a position vector in a three-dimensional coordinate system. Velocity It's going to continue representing the change so if r is a function that depends on time because x, y, and z do, v describes the change in r so let's imagine just a simple two-dimensional two coordinate system with x and y, there might be r1, here might be r2. This quantity v is the change in r or the change in time, by which we mean r1 minus r2 over t1 minus t2. Since the two quantities in the numerator are vectors, and the two quantities in the denominator are scalars, 
then this is a, a overall vector. There's v as a vector. Which I've written this backwards. This is 2 minus 1, 2 minus 1. And where does delta r point? Delta r points from the, the tip of one vector to the tip of the other. Of course, if the change in time is very, very small, this has a sort of limiting sense of a derivative. dr dt. By which we mean that the x component of velocity is dx dt for the change in the x function. dy is dy dt and so on. That's, of course, in the limit where this time increment, delta t, is very small. But we can easily talk about the average velocity or the instantaneous velocity. Either way is, is OK. We just have to be careful what we mean, the differential sense or the average over some time increment kind of sense.